How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here, and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys one of the most important optimizations in which you can apply to any PC to improve gaming performance and help fix micro stuttering you may be experiencing with inside of your games. This will help provide you with a slight FPS boost, but more importantly, stop you running into those major lag spikes and micro stuttering issues you could be experiencing on any games. This works for both high-end, low-end, old and new PCs, so regardless of how good or bad your system is, you will see benefits from using these optimizations. As always, if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously. And if you wish to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in optimizations, please do consider pressing the subscription button on the channel to be notified instantly as soon as new content goes live. With all that said and done, let's get straight on into the video. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. The main optimization we're going to be covering inside of this video is going to be the empty standby list utility. This is quite similar to a program I recommend in most of my optimization videos, which is the ISLC program, but the difference with this program is that we can actually set it up to run automatically at all times, so this optimization is something that you can just simply set, forget about, and have the optimizations and benefits from using this in the future without having to do anything. It's a must-have Windows optimization for both Windows 10 and 11 users, and you can find the application linked in the description down below, or you can simply search empty standby list on Google and go to the WJ32 page. Once you're on this page, simply scroll down. You can read briefly into what the empty standby list tool can do. We're interested in scrolling down to the download section, downloading empty standby list.exe. Once this is downloaded, put this on your desktop. With the file on your desktop, navigate down and open up your file explorer. Navigate over to this PC on the left hand side, go to your local disk C drive, and we're going to be installing the program in this location because it's very quick and easy to get back into. If you wish to delete it, you can do so very quickly and easily. Right click, select new, folder. Call the folder, empty, standby, list, just like so, and press enter. Double click in the folder, drag the empty standby list utility in here. Once that's done, right click on the utility, navigate down to properties, go to the compatibility tab and ensure this program has been set to run this program as administrator for this to work properly. Once that's done, select apply, select OK. First of all, take yourself to the bottom left hand side and we're going to be searching for resource monitor. Open up the resource monitor, navigate up to the memory tab at the top. You should then be able to see your standby memory within inside of this list. Now, assuming that I've just run this program before recording this video, my standby list is relatively empty. But for most of you watching, you could be seeing up to multiple gigabytes of standby memory in the background. This is typically going to be application data and frequently used applications sitting in your standby memory in your RAM because Windows is going to be expecting you to use those files again. The problem with this is, is especially for those of you running on 16 gigabytes or even 32 gig of RAM, Windows doesn't do a particularly good job of clearing this list out. So it gets larger and larger and larger, and over time, the pool of memory available to your games becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until the point where you then experience major micro stutters. For now we can simply minimize out of the resource monitor as we can look into that later to make sure the program is working. Take yourself to the bottom left hand side, click on your windows button, we're then going to be searching for task scheduler. Open this up. Inside of task scheduler, navigate over to the left hand side to your task scheduler library. Inside of here go to the middle section to where all of the listed tasks are. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, find a blank space, right click, then select create new task. Start off with the name, we're going to be calling this empty standby list, just like so. Once that's been selected, navigate down to run with highest privileges. Whilst we're still inside of the general settings tab, you must go down to the options for run only when user is logged on and change this to run whether user is logged on or not. If you do not select the second option with inside of it, every single time the task runs, this will open up a command prompt window with inside of Windows as it runs, which will keep tabbing you out of games in which you are playing. So make sure that you have the second option titled run whether user is logged on or not has been selected. With that option then set up, you then need to navigate over to the right hand side to change user or group. Inside of this page that pops up, navigate to the bottom left hand side to the advanced section. Inside of here on the right hand side, select find now. Inside of all of the search results that pop up, scroll all the way towards the bottom until you find system. Highlight and select system. Once that's been selected, select OK, select OK, and this should then appear as NT authority slash system. Lastly, in the general tab, navigate down to configure 4, go to the drop down menu and set this to Windows 10, even if you are running on Windows 11. We can then navigate over to the triggers tab. 
Once that's been selected, go down to New. Inside of the Trigger page, ensure that Begin the Task has been set to On a Schedule. Set this to One Time. Navigate down, select the Repeat Task Every option. In the drop-down menu for the time, we're either going to be setting this to 5 minutes or 10 minutes. If you don't see great results from using this, you can also try 10 minutes, but I'm going to be sticking with 5. Go to For a Duration Of, go to the drop-down menu and set this to Indefinitely. Once those three options have been set up, select OK. Go back up to the top, this time to Actions. Navigate down to New once again. Select the action to be Start a Program. Go down to the Program slash Script, select Browse. We're then going to navigate to the installation path of Empty Standby List. So for most of you watching, this should be in this PC, Local Disk C Drive, Empty Standby List, select the program, select Open. Once that's done, go ahead and select OK. Select OK once again. Once you have finished setting up the empty standby list scheduler and you've pressed OK, you may be brought to this page here. Inside of it, you simply need to put in the account password in which you would use to sign into your PC. So it's just going to be the password in which you'd usually press when you log into Windows. Once that's been done, select OK. Scroll up and you should now see that the empty standby list task has now been scheduled to work. Now this should be running in the background, clearing out your standby list every five minutes. And to check if this is doing so, we can actually minimize this program, drag it over to the side and open back up inside of Resource Monitor. As you can see, my standby list is currently 500 megabytes. Going back over to the task scheduler, to speed things up, we can actually right click on the task, select Run. On the right hand side of your screen, you should then see that your standby list has been completely cleared out and reset back to zero. Now this will start growing, but if it has reset back to zero, that's fantastic. It means that we've successfully set up the empty standby list task properly and it's doing its job. I should now repeat that task every five minutes, every single time you boot on your PC and you'll never have to set this optimization again. With that set up, we can then exit out the resource monitor and exit out of task scheduler. But what if you want to revert this change and delete the task from running on your PC? Well, it's very simple and easy to do. Go back inside of task scheduler, find the empty empty standby list task, right click, disable it, then delete it. Once that's done, that will stop running on your PC. You could then also go inside of this PC, local disk C drive, and just delete the folder with inside of here, and this optimization will be cleared off your system if you ever want to decide to do that. And that's the bulk optimization now successfully set up. That will help drastically reduce micro stuttering and lag spikes you're experiencing in most games, and is one of the most important Windows 10 and Windows 11 optimizations for anyone playing games on their PC. Now before we close out this video, I'm also going to include a few more recommended optimizations to pile on top of this to help further reduce input latency, fix micro stuttering issues, and slightly improve FPS with inside of games for this next optimization we're going to be navigating down to your Windows button, typing in Device Space Manager, open up inside of the Device Manager. Inside of here, scroll down until you find the S section, find System Devices, double click, scroll down to the H section, and we're going to be looking for the High Precision Event Timer. Now, some systems may already have this turned off, some may have this turned on. One optimization in which you can experiment around with for your system is to right click on the high precision event timer and either disable or enable it. Just simply change the setting to the setting that your PC is not currently set to. So if you have this disabled, enable this. If you have it enabled, disable it. Once that's done and you've restarted Windows, go into your favorite games, browse Windows, and if you don't notice any slowdowns, I would definitely keep that optimization set. If for some reason you do find that your Windows is rather sluggish and slow after applying the optimization, boot back with inside of the device manager, come down to high precision event timer and either enable it or disable it back to the setting it was originally. With that optimization set we can exit out. For another quick extremely basic optimization but one that's very effective, press Control alt delete on your keyboard and open up inside of the Windows Task Manager. Inside of Task Manager navigate up to the Startup tab at the top. This list then consists of every single program that's going to automatically boot every single time you log into your PC. We want to disable as many of these programs as possible. This will not only speed up login times, but it will also stop these applications automatically opening up, taking up CPU cycles, and RAM in the background. This doesn't mean that you will not be able to use these apps anymore, we're not uninstalling them, it just means that these apps will not be allowed to automatically open up. So if you want to open up inside of Steam or Discord, you can do so just manually. To disable an application with inside of it, and I'd recommend disabling as many as possible as long as you know what the applications are, highlight the application, go to the bottom right, select disable, and continue on. Last but not least, for any of you running on a Chromium-based web browser, whether that be Microsoft Edge, Firefox, or Google Chrome, take yourself into the web browser, go to the top right hand side to the three dots, navigate down to your settings page. On the left hand side, select settings once again, scroll down to advanced, go to this drop down menu, then select system. 
Inside of here, make sure that the option for continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed has been disabled. This is automatically turned to enabled, and having this enabled will mean that every single time you close out the web browser, all of your Chrome extensions and applications are still running in the background. Turning this off will mean that whenever you close out, everything associated with Chrome is closed. You then go ahead and exit out. And that is it for the optimizations in this video. Do feel free to check out some of the videos shown on screen now to help you gain further performance out of your system and learn all about optimizations.